Hello everyone, Kevin here, getting over a wicked cold virus, so my voice might sound a little raspy and nasally, but I didn't want to make you all wait any longer for this, so here it is. This is the second part in my modding Minecraft 1.8 series, the Forge Edition. In the previous video, we set up a Forge coding environment in Eclipse and installed the Forge plugin. In this video, I'd like to cover a few fundamentals of coding with Forge including the use of annotations and proxies. And by the end of this tutorial, we'll have a complete template to begin coding our mods. So let's get started. Annotations are a kind of metadata given the compiler or other codes such as the Forge API information about the class, function, or field it's attached to. They're used to tell Forge how to handle and what to do with certain classes and functions in our code. All annotations in Java start with the at symbol. So let's go through the annotations used by Forge. The event handler annotation is used to define a function as an event. Valid Forge event functions are the pre init, init, and post init functions. When Forge starts up, it looks in your main mod classes and calls these functions if they're attached to the event handler annotation. The mod annotation is used to define your main class as the mod starting class. When Forge starts, it will look for any class with the mod annotation. The mod annotation requires four parameters. If you hover over an annotation in Eclipse, a small window will pop up with a description of that annotation. So let's take a look at the mod annotation description. This defines a mod to FML. Any class found with this annotation applied will be loaded as a mod. The instance that is loaded will represent the mod to other mods in the system. It will be sent various subclasses of FML events at predefined times during the loading of the game based on where you have applied the event handler annotation. The mod annotation basically tells Forge that there's a mod to load here. The parameters for the mod annotation are the mod ID, the mod name, and the mod version, and its dependencies. The instance annotation defines an instance object of a mod. This can be used to access other mods based on their mod IDs. The cited proxy annotation is one of the most important ones. Cited proxies are loaded based on the specific environment they find themselves loaded into. Uh, they are used to ensure that client-specific code, such as GUIs, is only loaded into the game on the client side. It is applied to static fields of a class anywhere in your mod code. FML will scan and load any classes with this annotation at mod construction time. Minecraft has an integrated server. Most of the code applies to both the server and the client. However, some code, such as the server packet handling, only runs on the server. And some code, such as the renderer, the music, sound effects, and the GUIs, only run on the client. The cited proxy annotation allows us to set up a class proxy system to separate the client, server, and common shared code. We'll get more into proxies when we code our mod template. So now that we covered the basics, let's start our mod template. We start by deleting the example mod package. Select the example mod package and hit delete on your keyboard. Then right click on the main Java folder and create a new package. There's a general naming convention for mod packages. The package name starts with com, then a unique name that identifies you as the modder, and then your mod ID, all separated by periods. A package name must be all lowercase. Forge doesn't like uppercase characters in its package names or resource paths. So let's name our package. I'll use my full name. It's very unlikely that another modder would have Kevin John Matt as their full name, 
and I'll use Kev's mod as the mod ID. Then click finish to create the package. Now right click on the new package and create a new class. We call this class main with a capital M. Then click finish to create. You could call it anything, but this is the main starting class for the mod, so main is an appropriate name. As usual, we start off by adding all the imports we'll need. These are the standard imports for the Forge main class. There will be more to add later when we start building our mod, but this is all we need for now. Usually we declare three static strings to hold the mod ID, mod name, and version. These will be referred quite often while coding the mod, mostly the mod ID, and it's always good practice to declare them as static constants. Now we can use those static strings to populate the mod annotation. We add the mod annotation just before the main class. This will tell Forge that this class is the starting class for a Forge mod. The parameters for the mod annotation are the mod ID, the mod name, the mod version, and its dependencies. In the dependencies, you can tell Forge if your mod is dependent on other mods. In this case, we simply give the FML mod as the dependency, which tells Forge that the only dependency your mod has is the Forge plugin itself. Now we need to create an instance reference of our mod using the instance annotation. The parameter for the instance annotation is the mod ID. This annotation is attached to a static main instance. Then we create three public event functions, each one with the event handler annotation, a pre-init, init, and post-init function. When Forge starts up, it will search for these function names with this annotation and call them before, during, and after the game initialization, respectively. So that's all, right? Not quite. It would be if you were making a single player mod that would never be shared and only played on the client. But we want to do a little better than that. This brings us to the subject of the client server proxy. This part might get a little confusing, but it will all get a lot clearer as we go. So this is what we're going to do. This is the conventional and most efficient way to create a proxy. This represents our main class. We're going to create three new classes called Common Proxy, Client Proxy, and Server Proxy. Client and Server Proxy classes will extend from the Common Proxy class, making them children of Common Proxy. Then in the main class, we're going to define those child classes as the Client and Server Proxies using the Cited Proxy annotation. This will tell Forge that if a function is called from this tree of classes, Forge needs to check if the mod is running on a server or on a client and call that function from the appropriate corresponding class. We'll then create a static instance of the common proxy class in the main class. And in the client and server proxy classes, we'll call the parent common proxy functions. All our client-specific code goes in the client proxy class, server-specific code goes in the server proxy class, and code that applies to both goes in the common proxy class. So let's create our three proxy classes. Right-click on our mod package and create a new class. Call it common proxy.
then repeat two more times for the client proxy and server proxy classes. We'll start with the common proxy class. We start by adding the imports we'll need, which are the forge event function classes. Then the three init functions. Note that we don't use any annotations here. Save and close the common proxy class. Now for the server proxy class. Again, we add the imports. And we extend the server proxy class from the common proxy class. Then we add the three init functions. Note that we use an override annotation for each function in this class. This ensures that the compiler will override the parent functions in common proxy. We also call the parent for each function, which is the common proxy function. Forge will run these functions first, then the common functions, and we can control in what order the code is executed by placing it before or after this parent call. And we can save this class. The server and client proxy classes are identical, except for their names. So let's just highlight and copy this class. And then paste it into the client proxy class. Then all you need to do is change the name in the class declaration. Then save and close both proxy classes. Now back in the main class, we can define our proxies with the cited proxy annotation. We create a static common proxy object called proxy and use the cited proxy annotation to define it as our proxy class. The first parameter for the cited proxy is the mod ID. The other two parameters are the client side and server side. Note that we need to use the full package name with our class names. Now for each of these event functions, we need to call the corresponding function in the proxy class we just created. And that's all. Our mod template is complete. You can save this class. This will be a universal starting point for most, if not all, your mods in Forge. Each mod will have different mod IDs and package names, but all those values can be easily changed right here in the main class. In the next video, we can finally get started on a real mod. Please don't forget to hit that like button and feel free to share and subscribe for more. I'll see you soon.